Good to see you all. Uh, thank you for coming here. I feel happy that we're studying Shinget together. And today is Friday, Kejinyagi. It's April, the month of true plant budding. And 21 days have passed this month. So I'm excited for today. We talked last week about our intentions and our language learning interests. And I was reminded that we still haven't covered the Southern dialect yet. And part of my hesitation to represent the Southern dialect is that I'm not a specialist on it. However, uh, as I decolonize my mind, I realize I don't need to be a specialist to bring representation. And also in the meantime, I gained some materials uh, from guest lectures by Weha, Jeff Lear, and Zeosh, James Kirpin. So they both guest lectured in another class that I teach with Shaksani Kik for Klinket and Haida. And they were both kind enough to share the materials that they covered. So I'll do my best to bring those together. I pulled them all up. We have recordings and texts and information on some of the differences that you'll hear that are unique to the uh, Southern dialects. And we'll have a discussion. So um, we'll start off with conversation practice. I like to hear your voices and keep you talking regularly. So we'll review some of our conversational phrases. I'll ask the question on the top. For example, this one, I'll ask you, Wasa Iyati. And you all can unmute your mics and just answer willy nilly all at the same time if you like. It doesn't matter. The purpose of this exercise is for you to build a response in your mind and in your mouth. When you hear a question, you respond um, and it becomes habit for you. And so I'll ask you that. You can respond. And then if you want, you can ask how I'm doing by saying, what So, uh, Yungewane, are you ready? Ah. Okay. Wasa yiyati. And these ones I'll ask you the or say a phrase. These are options for you to respond, and you can just same thing, pick one and answer at your uh, pace. So what a qua ah yeah, It's so good to hear your voices. So thank you. Do you have any questions on any of these phrases before we continue? If not, oh, did you have a question? Okay. Um, if not, we'll jump into Southern dialect. So um, before we start talking about the particulars, I want to share a graphic with you that Zeosh James Crippen shared with us. 
Well, let me find it here. These are um, the slides that James Crippen shared. His Tlingit name is Zeosh. And I like this map that he used. So he came to our class and gave an overview of dialects. He had a lot of information. He's a professor and a PhD of linguistics. He's Tlingit. And uh, he gave a very comprehensive presentation to our class about an overview of Tlingit dialects. So um, uh, dialects are a type of language variation. All languages have variation in them. But looking at a map helps me visualize where you're where we're talking about when we refer to different dialects. So in this map that Zeosh put together, you have Northern Tlingit, um, all modern Tlingit communities from Wrangell north to Yakutat, including inland communities. So he has arrows pointing to inland northern, which is Dakka Naki. Um, that's like Atlin, Teslin, Carcross area, Whitehorse. Um, also transitional northern, uh, the Gigenaki. And that would be Wrangell and Petersburg areas. Uh, take and then the area we're well most of you are in in Juneau would be coastal northern so Kanaki and uh, that would also include Skagway, Haines, Huna, Angoon, Yakutat um, and then you also have southern Tlingit which would be Ketchikan, Saxman, Klawak, and Craig and so Southern dialect is called Sanya Ichki in Tlingit. Um, and then you also have Tongas Tlingit, which has very unique qualities that are different from Sanya uh, Ichki. And that would also include Ketchikan. So we'll talk about some of the differences. Mostly what you'll hear is difference in the way vowels are pronounced. So in Northern Tlingit, uh, you'll hear high tone and low tone on both, both short and long vowels. In Southern Tlingit, you'll hear high tone and low tone again, but also a falling tone. So it goes high and then falls back to low. Uh, and for the Tongas Tlingit, there's no tone in the vowels, but what you have instead is uh, different qualities in your larynx that you'll hear pronounced. So for example, a glottal stop after vowels, which you don't typically hear in Northern coastal Tlingit. Um, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll point out more examples when we listen to the recordings and look at the text. Um, some other differences which have similar geography patterns include dropping of some vowels in Tongas Southern in nearby. So we'll look at uh, a phone call that I was playing at the beginning of class today between Jeff Lear and Clara Paradovich. And when I was reading the transcription of their phone call, I could see where they had dropped some vowels. So we'll point that out as well. And there's distinct vocabulary in Tongas and Southern, including Chinook jargon, borrowings, a limited spread of rounding, the W that you'll see written from consonants to vowels. So gwit versus gwit for dime. And then uh, Zeosh mentioned probably other distinctive differences, but we need more study. So going back to our slides, um, the class recording, I'll share all of these with you. So in this, sli in this slideshow presentation, I have a lot of links to materials. And what I'm going to do, rather than paste them all in the chat, is just share these slides with you so that you'll have access to all of them. So 
put that in now and then you can continue to refer to it because there's a lot of material in here. We won't have time to cover even half of it today, but we'll continue to revisit this. Um, but yeah, are there any questions so far? Okay. No, no question, just gonna cheese. Ah, okay. So we're gonna look at uh, the slides by Weha, Jeff Lear, and Barry here. Oh, my life. When when uh, Jeff Lear came to our class, he covered oh. both the Tongass dialect, which is called Tantaquan, and the Klawak dialect, uh, Hinya, Hinya Kwan. So a brief overview of his materials. Uh, when he visited us, we listened to recordings by Frank Williams and Emma Williams, as well as Clara Paradovich. And we looked at this text, which is called Tongas text. So I'll take you to the top where you can see it. But all of these resources are in the slides that I shared with you. So we'll go. I'll just give you a look at what it looks like. This is the text of, of stories by Frank Williams and Emma Williams. And Jeff Lear uh, transcribed and edited these. So an overview for the Tongass dialect. I know that our interest is in Southern or Sanya Kwan, but we'll also look at Tongass so that you can see the variation between them as well, because geographically they're very close together, but the linguistic qualities are very different, which to me is just fascinating. So some of the things I wanted to point out about the vowels are described on page 13. Uh, it says the vowel system for the Tongass dialect, Tantafuan, the most interesting feature of Tongass Tlingit from a comparative point of view is that it differs from the rest of Tlingit in having a system of vowel nucleus modification, which is basically non-tonal, but rather closely resembles that of Iak. This fact is especially significant in view of the fact that the Tongass community is located at the southernmost end of the Tlingit territory and shows signs of long association with the Simshian, whereas the Iak homeland is located at the northernmost end of the Tlingit territory, the southernmost of the known Iak settlements being at Yakutat, where according to local tradition, Tlingit from the south moved in next to the Iak in comparatively recent times. Hence, it seems out of the question that the most common features of the vowel nucleus system of Iak and Tongas Tlingit are due to aerial contact in recent times. It seems much more likely that this system of modified vowel nuclei reflects the original Nod Dene system, which has given rise to the tone systems in the most uh, Tlingit and in Athabascan. Ironically, both the language and the dialect retaining varieties of the original vowel nucleus system have only two or three speakers surviving. There are four vowels in Tlingit, which have single vowel spellings when short and double vowel spellings when long. So this is a just a little bit of migration history and then the overview of the vowel tone and length with which we're already familiar. But where you start seeing variation is here. So uh, so these are some of the, uh, what do you call it, notation that you'll see that's unique to Tong Tantaquan dialect. So the sustained vowel, it looks like a little raised dot and the Vs stand for vowels. So you, you, this will occur anywhere where there's a double A or a double E or an EI or a double O. Um, the vowel is at least twice the length of a short unmodified vowel. If the syllable is stressed, it tends to start at a high pitch and gradually become lower, but the effect is not at all similar to the sudden uh, 
decrescendo, decrescendo characteristics of the fading nucleus. So that one I'm still working on being able to identify when I hear, but these other ones I'm more familiar with. I can hear it when I play the recording that we're going to listen to. So another type of vowel variation that's unique to Tantaquan, Tongas Tlinget, is a clipped vowel. So that'll be written by an apostrophe after two vowels, which we don't normally see that in northern coastal Tlinget. So in this case, the vowel is modified by closing the glottis. Remember glottal stop and what? That's your glottis. So when you stop the airflow, that's what you're hearing after vowels and in, in clipped vowels. Uh, in other words, this kind of nucleus is equivalent to a short vowel followed by a glottal stop. So we'll look at examples, but again, I'm just giving you an overview of what we're going to see written and we can start associating that with how it's going to sound. And then a fourth type of variation is fading in vowels. So this looks like a stigma. So it'll be two vowels followed by this stigma sign. And this signifies the vowel is modified by opening the glottis, which results in a rapid fading in the volume and pitch of the vowel, accompanied in some cases by breathiness. The fading character of this nucleus is especially exaggerated when the syllable is stressed as for stylistic effect. Where the syllable is not stressed, the fading effect is much less noticeable and tends to sound like a mid or low tone syllable. In either case, however, a fading nucleus is not as long as a long nucleus, but is definitely longer than a short nucleus. So I know that's a lot. Like for me, reading about sounds in English, I'm like, okay, just let me hear it. So we're, we're, we'll do that. Um, so we, looking at a couple examples of what that will look like, there's some comparative diagrams here where in Northern, we're familiar with this type of notation and sounds uh, where you have a short high vowel, uh, a short low vowel, long high and long low. And words that are the same word across all three dialects will be pronounced differently in the vowels. Um, so for example, if you have a long high vowel in Northern, it, that will be a, right, a falling. So go high and low in Sanya Henya Kwan. And then it will be what did, uh, clipped in the Tongas variation. So transporting that to words, in Northern, for example, the word for man is ka, and it's a long high A. So this is what we hear in Juno. Sanya Henya Kwan, it might sound more like ka, where it goes high and then low. And then in Tanta Kwan or Tongas, it might sound like ka. So you glottalize the end of it. And then I won't go too in depth on this slide because um, I want to play a recording and let you start to hear it and see it written. But one point that Weha or Jeff Lear wanted to make from this is sometimes you have a dropping of short vowels in Tongas. So Tongas is here on the left. Um, in Northern for the word, it was killed, would do a juk. In Tongas, it will sound like woodwajak. So we lost that instead of wooduwa, it's woodwa. And I want you to keep your ears open for that when we listen to it. Um, but are there any questions so far before I play the recording? I'll share these slides with you too, just so you have any.
Oh, there's nine. Okay. Okay, so let's look at an example. So if you want to see Jeff Lear um, present on this from our class recording, that would be here under class recording. And again, you have you have a copy of these slides. So later, if you want to watch him present on it, I recommend it. You can click this. And then we'll also just look at his materials in class here today. So opening up the recording by Frank Williams. <laughs> This one I have downloaded already and I'm going to play it on iTunes. So I have it open here. Let me just pull it up. I'm going to do a new share of my whole desktop and I'll pull iTunes over. So let's see. Like this. And then I'll pull up the text so that we can read along while we listen. So here we have this text, and I should have that open here. It's on page 27. Okay, so this is a recording of Frank Williams telling the story of Gut Shakanyodat Shkashnik. And what I'll play it and then we'll read along. And you, you'll see, like, for example, you'll notice right away, okay, this is a raised dot. I don't see that in the thing yet that we've been studying so far for Northern Coastal. Here's an example of our glottal stop or our clipped uh, vowel apostrophe after a vowel. And try to see if you can hear it. I'll play a few lines and then um, afterwards we can we can run it back and play it again. Um, but for me, this is super fun. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to rewind it just a little bit. Yeah. Takwit <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pause it there. So the way this text goes is you'll have the page of Flinget transcription followed by the corresponding English translation. Um, and you'll have access to this, so I won't uh, read it in English, but looking back at some of these words, did you all have noticed any of the sounds that seem different? Yeah, the fading, I really noticed. Awesome. Was there a particular word that you were like, oh, I hear that?
Uh, on to uh, uh, the ones that are in the middle of the word are a little bit harder to kind of catch, but yeah, I think a yeah, it seemed like some of the ends just were really soft and faded away. Some of the ends of words, I don't know specific examples, but yeah, maybe and there was kind of a, a harder sound at the end, yeah. Like the mm -hmm. yeah, in general, I'm hearing like uh like it just sounds kind of um I don't know how to describe it musical. Weha mentioned that everyone like the birth speakers from the different dialects will comment that oh Tanta Kwan sounds musical to me and Tanta Kwan are like oh northern sounds musical <laughs> but it, it's hard it's hard for me to describe it in another way but there's a rhythm to it that I just find very um beautiful um I'll play another page or another section of it and then we'll look at also uh, recording of a phone call between Claire Paradovich and Jeff Lear. But this is just an um, introductory representation of Tanta Kwan. Okay, so we'll go one more page and then we'll switch it up. Kasni <laughs> Ah, when squat the Kuyahi Taguani sing it, Jacqua, because it tastes an itch who just tints with the ha yachas to read natis. Such a school cut as to he on the Taguani, as Tanta Kwan on the Ayu. Then Ras Kwan to do a song. Ah, has to yaki you on the Guna Kwan a doku. Q do scan his asa. The Guatna is has a rod lapper, has a wood jug. Ten the huis car, a keo chick at good two day. A can a cut, cae taguani. Okay, and that one, what stood out most to me was this line, has a was cool cut. So this is an example of in northern coastal Tlingit, the word for man is ka, is long high a ka. He says uh ka. So he does a glottal stop at the end of the vowel. Anything else you all notice a particular line you want to replay or something that you just wanted to point out? Questions, comments. Okay. So that was a little representation of Tanta Kwan, a spoken by Frank Williams. In this story, he told the war at Ruch Lakanu. And the next recording I'll share with you, let me find. Uh, so the Hinya 
Quan dialect of Klawak. Uh, for our guest lecture, Jeff Lear Weha brought a recording of Clara Paradovich. And it's a phone call that he recorded and also transcribed and translated. So looking at the Hinyakwan dialect, um, let me find that map that Weha shared with us. I think it was this one. So Hinya Southern dialect is around this area of Klawak, Saxman, Craig, and Ketchikan. And so this is where Clara Paradovich was from and or spoke the dialect of. And this is the text. And again, I'm going to change my screen up. I'm going to go like this so I can stop it and start it and stop it. And then we'll look at the text. Um, looking back at some of the examples of uh, unique sounds of the Sanya Hanya Kwan dialects. Again, so man, the word for man in Tlingit, as you hear in Northern Coastal is ka. In Sanya Hena Kwan, that might appear as a falling tone. So it'll go high and then low. So that's one of the things that we'll look for and listen for. Um, dropping of short vowels, we'll hear that in this one as well. So again, in Northern Coastal, for it was killed, you would hear wudu wajak. In the Hinya Kwan dialect, you'll hear wut wajak. And I'll point out some examples in the transcription of the phone call where I hear that and I saw that too. In this transcription, Weha wrote the Thinget. Sorry, he wrote the Thinget and then in parentheses put the English. So you can kind of see them both in, as you're reading. Okay. Here we go. Hello? Oh, good. Can I get? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. I want to see your tea. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I have to come from the back room. Oh, from the gate, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered about you. Yeah. I had to go on a, a trip. But I had to go on a trip. Yeah, we... Uh, we don't know what key is a cool one, uh, Austin Hammond. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's good? Uh, the cook a cut that was good. Oh, oh, do I eat the the cutting with what tea? Uh, what's that? The cutting with what tea? Ah, the cutting? Yeah, the can tombstone. Oh, ah. Uh, Peg, uh, um, this was the, I don't know what you call it, the years, years. Peg, talk in shoes, tani. Ah. Oh, eh, kocht ikt. Ah. I see. Yeah, wuk echa. That was neat. Ah. Uh. Well, Church just so kahatne. Ah. Ah, God, look. Ah, did you a hiccus? Gaw care for this way at two deer or katanet. Hot as old tip away at two deer or to a tan get. Ah. Where tapes pose, pao is where 
Tatsia. Okay, I'm going to pause it before we go too far. Uh, what popped out to you guys reading along and listening to this? It doesn't have to be deep linguistic analysis. I don't expect you to know, like, you know, oh, I've heard a falling or tone here. But I didn't anything, think, uh, for me, it just is clearer. I think because you tuned us in to what to listen for, I'm hearing more. So cool. it's the sounds seem clearer, more distinct. Cool. Okay. For me, it sounds normal. Yeah. <laughs> and so because she was my teacher. Um, and so it's sometimes adjustments I have to make to the northern dialect. So it was making me really smile to hear her voice. It's oh, good. Okay. Love that. So lucky to have such a cool teacher. Yeah, it's fun to hear her voice. I never I haven't met Clara Paradovich, but... Really beautiful speaker. Any other comments before I point out some of the things I noticed in this one? So here we'll see an example when Jeff asks her, uh, did you know Danawak? He says, Danawak is kun. And you can see he's dropping vowels too. He's modifying the way he speaks to fit uh, the Hinyakwan dialect. And then she answers, yeah, So in Northern Coastal Tlingit, we'll hear, we'll hear another I right here, I know them. And she says, Hwesku. Um, this was just a really cool conversation for me to hear too, because they're talking about Kuik and the right way to do things and what needs to be done. Uh, Kateyi is stone above it. So that's the headstone. And here's another example of dropping of a vowel uh, when Claire Paradovich says, So in Northern, I would say, that's the dialect that I was taught in. Um, in Hinyakwan, she says, So I'm going to play it again from the top, but this time I'll try to pause it and see if I can rewind it. It might be a little tricky in this small soundbar, but uh, I'll, I'll go a little more line by line now that we got to hear a long segment. I'll play it again. <laughs> Did you hear that? She goes, yeah, 
Yeah, me too. So she says, yeah, chosku. In northern, I'll be chosku. Let's do another one. So here's another example. Dropped the vowel ku twa ik instead of ku tua ik. It says ku twa ik. Taking with what tea? Ah, what's up? Ah, the Yeah, the tombstone. Oh, ah. Uh, take, uh, um, this was the, I don't know what you call it, the years, years. Take talk and shoe, Tony. Ah. Oh, eh, cooked each. Ah. I see. Yeah, we'll okay. That was neat. Uh, yeah. Well, church just so a hot snap. Ah. Oh, God, look. Oh, did you work this? This is where I w- I'm trying to hear it. I don't know if my ear is tuned into it yet, but this uh, tone mark over the a is a falling tone. So in Northern Coastal Thinget, we only have a high tone that slashes upward. And that's to show high tone. Uh, in Hinya Kwan, you also have a falling tone, or a, not falling tone, a low tone. So I'm, I'm going to rewind a little bit and I'll see if I can hear it. But I wanted you all to see if you can listen for it too. That was neat. Uh, well, church just so a hot snap. Oh, God, look. Oh, did you work this? Go, okay, what is way? At two deer, a katan, and hot as old tip away at two deer, what do a tan get? Well, Okay. Were you able to hear it? Not yet. Me neither. I'm still getting there, but uh, people whose ears are tuned into it can hear it. Uh, I compare, so in this presentation or representation, I'm comparing Hinya Kwan and Tanta Kwan to Northern uh, Thinget because that's my basis for comparison. But what I really like that Zosh uh, emphasized in his presentation is that there's no hierarchy of the dialects. There's no normal and then everything else is different. And so that's why I appreciated hearing some of you say, well, this is normal for me. I'm adapting to Northern Thinget. And um, I do want to continue this representation of different dialects it's always good to include them and just remember there's not a normal and then a different it's just they're all differences they have uh di- unique qualities um in each each area any comments or questions on those two examples of Recordings by Frank Williams of Tanta Kwan or Clara Paradovich of Hinya Kwan. I just want to make a comment that when I first heard it after studying with Clara, someone was talking about the Man's Foot Clan, Kahus Atan, Hitan uh-huh. is how I've always said it. Uh-huh. And someone was talking about it and they said, Kahusi Atan. And I was going, what is that? Oh. But they added that I, Kahusiatan, instead of Kahusiatan. So just oh. interesting. Yeah, that is cool. But thank you very much for doing this and for sending it. I'm going to really enjoy listening to them. So, Ganeshish. Ah, you okay. Next week we'll do, since we're a little too close on time today to jump into another recording, 
uh, next week, we'll look at the presentation and materials that Zeo shared with us. And he has recordings as well that do a really nice job of illustrating how the variation between the dialects sounds. So that was really, so that'll be cool next week too. Um, and since we're close to the end of our class, let's just have space for discussion now. Um, anything else you guys wanted to include, comments or questions? I just, I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to listening to that and concentrating on learning it because they're talking about my uncle there. Oh, who's your uncle? Austin Hammond. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my ears perked up. I'm actually working, so I, and I'm losing my voice. Oh. But I, I just wanted to say thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Good uh, oh, I was going to say, um, did I hear you say you're going to send those by email? I can email them to Ati and ask him to sh ask her to share them with you. The other way you can access them right away is uh, I'll put the link in the chat to these slides. And once you have these slides, you have access to all of the materials because I put links to them in the slides so you should be and I I made them all shareable so you should be able to click any one of these links and study them on your own okay great I haven't had a chance to look to see whether or not they put up the recordings yet of the classes here those need to be uploaded I might put them on my own website I've sent them to Rene, um and uh, I, find, I find it so helpful to go back over it after class. Yeah, good Let me see right now if these are uploaded. Yeah, I sent these to Hone. He hasn't uploaded them yet. So our last class on the website is January 27th. So I uh, will work on making it accessible to you because I have all the recordings. And so I'll just I'll just make it happen. Um I'll try I'll email Ati. Uh, um Anna, yeah, we can just forward an email with everything if that's helpful while Fune is catching up. Okay. Yeah, all those emails that I sent him already. Um I could resend them to you and ask you to forward them or. Yeah, you've them. included me. So I'll just cut and paste them into one and we can forward them to everyone who's registered. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And then the link to the Google drive, because the recordings are in his Google drive that I put a link to in one of the emails. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know if you have questions. Good enough to you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Other interests, language learning interests you'd like me to include uh, in the next couple of weeks? I'm curious about how to share the personal project. Is that something that we send to you? Is that something that we... Yeah, if you send, if you email it to me, I'll put my email in the chat. Okay. And I can go over it with you and I can set up a, a day and time for you to share with the class and make sure that you're able to share your screen and, and everything. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. How is your personal Jeez. project going? It's really fun, actually. It's about the pronunciation will be the biggest challenge. So good. Yeah, yeah. I can I can review that with you outside of class too, if you like. Okay. That would be great. All right. Yeah, just send me an email and we'll set up a time. You okay. okay. Personal projects, yeah. 
That's good to hear. Another topic that folks mentioned they're interested in is plants and medicine. So um, next week we'll talk about, we'll review Zosh materials he shared with us. And then I'll be working on slides to cover plants and, and things like that as well. And were there any other um, topics that folks would like to be included in our next few weeks of classes? When's the last class again? Our last class um, will be by June 1st. So let's look at that. It'll be June 1st. So our last class would be the previous week before June 1st. So Friday, May 26th. So we still have uh, one, one, two, three, four, five more classes after this. So we'll do Southern dialects. So plants, personal projects, um, what other kinds of things, pronunciation, conversation practice, what would, I'm seeing some head nods. And video transcription, should we include that again? Okay, Johan. Well, I'll let you go a few minutes early so that you can continue on with your Friday. But uh thanks for listening to me today. I feel happy that we're studying Klinget together. And I feel proud of you. Okay. Gonna cheese. Oh, okay. <laughs>